which lighting system should you go with in D5 Render? There's three different types right now. We've got GeoSky, Custom, and HDRI. And each of them have their own pros and cons. So in this video, I'm gonna go through each of them. I'm gonna explain why you would use one over the other and what I typically use. So let's get right into it. So I've got this project right here and we're gonna start from the top. We're gonna go straight to Geo and Sky. All right, and what's this guy all about? This one, in my opinion, is like when you're starting out like project imported, not like skill level. You use this just so you can see, so you can position the sun in a way where you could see like the front of the building, you can play with the north offset. You really are using this for like conceptual phase lighting where you're not too concerned about like the intensity, how soft it is. You're more concerned about like, I need light at this time. What does my building look like? And I just need light to work. And I say all this because this is the dynamic system. So you get the perks of using this nice little gizmo, right? The north offset, and then you can dynamically increase or decrease the amount of cloud cover. So this is really different from the other systems like an HRI where this is all dynamic. So you can play with the density, the thickness, the speeds of the clouds. This really lets you fine tune the overall look very quickly. So this is a great option. If you just need quick lighting, you don't really care about the exact specifics of the quality of light. You just need light. So moving on to the next system, we have custom. So custom is kind of interesting because it's like geo and sky in terms of like adding light and you're choosing the altitude and azimuth, but this is where you would actually choose night mode as well. So just to go through these, we've got sunlight intensity, and this is something that's missing in geo and sky. You don't have that option, right? None of that is here. So this is what's gonna let you choose how bright the sun is and then how sharp the shadows are. So sun disk radius just means how soft are the shadows? So if you look around here, I have this at a 10, almost 10. This is gonna be really, really soft in terms of shadow quality. So look right here, you see how this is like soft and diffuse. If I crank this all the way down, this is gonna start to sharpen. You can see it coming sharper and sharper here. Generally speaking, I'm usually around like five or six. And the, the thought process behind this is most of the times in the sky, there's some sort of like cloud cover. It's really, really rare to have like 100% blue sky. And because of the clouds, it helps diffuse the light. So you never, never go sharp because then it just looks a little CGI -y, and we don't like that. And then altitude, this is the position of the sun in the sky, right? This is the, the altitude. How high is it? So we've got, this is very, very high. 90 degrees literally means it is directly above. This is like a noon, right? And then we've got something low, which would kick in like a, a sunset type of thing, right? So as you can see here, lower values will be a little bit like sunset, sunrise, that kind of thing. But this, never do this. This isn't flattering. Then azimuth, this is just the rotation. So think of this as the north offset. Um, I, I feel like a lot of people, especially if you're a non-English speaker, you would never know what this word means. This, just think of this as a rotation, okay? So this is going to give you intensity, softness, and then height and rotation, which is great. Then you've got custom night. So turn off daytime. And now here you can choose the overall moonlight intensity, how big the moon is. So if I could find the moon in the sky, you'd have that as an option. Let's just turn off that and let's find our moon just for this there we go as you can see it's huge because i've cranked that up but again this is like all part of the dynamic system so they're they're, they're really related um in a way it's just this is going to give you a lot more functionality and of course you've got altitude and azimuth as you can see that right that's moving around and you know just to show you for daytime because you're curious about the sun's position that looks like the sun you can literally just change that so anyways so you've got this here, you've got the options. Again, this is dynamic, it's not baked in. So this is if you want more control about the clouds, if you need nighttime, right? You would definitely use this system. Um, if you need, you know, specific intensity or softness, this is a good option. Custom's really good. Um, it gives you a lot more functionality over like Geo and Sky. I think like Geo and Sky is kind of like basic mode. Custom mode is like intermediate mode. And then HRI, in some ways, I kind of think it's like advanced mode. Although I don't think it's super complicated, I do think it's the best option, and I'll explain why. So HRI, typically, 
um, in most situations, it will give you the most photorealistic results because it's actually pulling a lot of like color and shadow and light information from an HRI image, which is like a super large 360 degree image um, that gets taken and you can literally pull all those colors into your scene. So it helps with the lighting. So if your HRI has a lot of like blues and pinks that comes into your reflections and your lighting. And that's really great. And you've got the functionality here to play with the, uh, the skylight. So skylights basically when the light from here is emitted, it bounces around the higher it is, the brighter you can see that if I lower this, it's not going to bounce as much. So that's what I, that's what I'm talking about with like the coloring coming from the HRI. Then the background is literally like how bright it is. So these guys you are probably wondering, well, where do they come from? You can either use the default ones and these are, these are like static frozen moments. So what I mean by that is like the clouds won't move. So if you need like midday, like this is it. Like if you need a morning, then you need to switch to morning. If you need cloudy, you need to find a cloudy image. It's not like you can play with that dynamic slider, but you can see the lighting looks already a lot better than geo and sky. That's just the nature of HRI. And if you ever need more, cause you can customize them. Um, big fan of ambient CG. It's free. You can download the HRIs. Highly recommend that. Um, but you bring that in there and you just play with a skylight background and then you can rotate. So what's interesting about HRIs is when I was saying everything is like static and baked, if we look at like where the sun is, we just look at like where the light's coming from. I just switch to perspective. It's coming, coming from this direction. And obviously with the clouds, it's kind of covered, right? But the sun is tied to the image. Okay, so let me switch to, let's say something that's clear sunny, just so you could see the sun a little bit better. We have the sun over here. As I move this around, you see how that's moving? It's moving with the sun. So that's like a pro and con of the HDRI. Or what you could do, if you don't want it to follow, this, if you don't want this on the follow HDRI, you can actually switch to custom. And now you have the benefit of the HDRI and your own altitude and azimuth slider. So it's kind of like a mix of custom with HRI. So kind of makes sense that this is called custom, that's called custom. So that's why I really like this mode because I can get the best of both worlds. I can get precise location of the sun's position as well as a beautiful background, right? And you've got plenty of other options about changing like the sky color, the overall temperature and your sunlight intensity, right? So this guy is like what we had in custom. Same thing with the sun disc radius. So this is all coming over. So this is what I mean, how it's like, this is kind of like basic. You've got like two, two functions here. Then here you've got like four. And then here you've got a bunch, right? You've got skylight, background, rotation, the coloring, sun, follow HRI or not, altitude, azimuth. So you've got a lot more, but this, this is really not that, that complicated. Once, once you get familiar with it, it makes a lot of sense, but I do recommend, you know, getting comfortable with these and then thinking about moving to HRI. I think just switching to that immediately, your renderings are going to look better. Just, you're going to have more cohesive and like consistent images where like, okay, you know, my, my clear blue sky is going to add a lot of like blue to my image. It's going to have nice sharp shadows. Geo and sky still good, but there's something I think that about the nature of just like how rendering works versus a dynamic system versus HRI, just something what I've noticed in the testing, they always look better with HRI. So keep that in mind. That's what I use all the time. So if you ever watch, you know, my webinars or tutorials, I always have this system here. And another thing I'll add when it comes to the system and HRIs is if you're like not comfortable dealing with light and everything, you can always use the AI atmosphere tool, which is this guy right here. You just upload an image and it'll do it for you. So here I upload an image of dusk and then it just like created an AI HRI, did all the lighting for me. Then I did one for like overcast and made another HRI and it's doing all this like in one click. So I don't feel like you need to know how to do all this, but if you want to be a better artist, it's good to know how to tweak, but I feel like this will get you to a really good starting point. Anyways, that's it for this video. If you have any questions about how this works, drop a comment. I'll get back to you. And as always, consider liking and subscribing to the video. Helps the channel out. See you next time.